Now, to get things started, we're gonna have a very appropriate song. I cannot believe she's here in the studio. Since the day I started a talk show, I've wanted this young woman on our show. She's a very special woman. She has had as much impact on popular music in America as any woman in history. She is a four-time Grammy winner, seven gold albums. Her album, Tapestry, has gone platinum 15 times over. And she's going to sing one of her many big hits from her wonderful album, Tapestry. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Carol King. <laughs> Great to have her here. As I said at the opening, we're very privileged to have as our guest on the show today, and we thank Gloria and Ms. Magazine for doing this to arrange for the appearance of Carol King. Here is Carol. Carol?
wasn't easy luring you from that ranch in Idaho. No. <laughs> it took something really special like this, though, because when I first heard about the women that were going to be on this show, all of them are women for whom I have a great deal of respect because they're committed to something they believe in and have put themselves out on the line, standing up, voicing their opinions, and uh, it hasn't always been easy. <laughs> I know that, but I really respect them for that, and I wanted to be in this company because I try to be that myself. Carol, you raised four children. Yeah. And has had a, you've had a very successful, as we all know, musical career. How did you maintain that balance? Um, well, <laughs> hasn't always been balanced, but I always uh, felt that that, th that life was a priority uh, as much as the career. I, it was never more one or more the other. They just sort of flowed along together, and I was lucky enough to be able to have the freedom of somebody to help with the children from the very, very beginning almost. Right. And that, that was a key factor. I know a lot of women have problems finding help to care or have had problems until, you know, your advances in that field, but that's been a, a big factor. What's your personal life like today? Uh, <laughs> well, I am... We're also curious. Everybody is so stunned you're here. I know that when you walk through today, people just stop and say they couldn't believe that you were... This is maybe your second appearance ever on television, isn't it? I think maybe so. The last one was about 15 years ago, and I can't even remember exactly where. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been an impressive show. Really? <laughs> well, you can bet I'll remember this one. Everybody's been very gracious and very nice. And Oh, you asked what life is like now. It's, uh, I'm in a relationship. I have, I guess, an unofficial husband. We're everything but officially, you know, a ceremony. And his name is Rick Sorensen. And, and you have the license? We have the license. We just have never quite had the ceremony. We're just going to do it one day, wake up, and when it feels good, we'll go do it. Or we won't. <laughs> I'm the captain of this ship. I'm, uh, I'm available. But to the perform groom isn't a here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, we are working together in Idaho on an issue which uh, involves human rights. We um, have been, we've become aware of bureaucratic abuses, which are, it's a lot easier to do in Idaho because jobs are limited, the economy is, is not doing too well there, and it's more noticeable in, in an area like that that's less populated. And uh, some officials of uh, the United States Forest Service who basically have a good cause, you know, to manage the forest, but some people kind of get power mad, and we've sort of uncovered examples of of that, and we're speaking out together. I'm obviously the more visible one, but we, we do work together to try to uh, keep people honest. I mean, again, that's why I'm so respectful of, of you two women, for, because you do speak How out. How would you give us music to do it with? Uh, I mean, women's music has been such an important part of this last absolutely. decade. I, I don't think I had ever seen a woman give a downbeat <laughs> until about 72 or 73. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I, and, and I've never been self-conscious about that. Uh, somebody has, or I've been asked from time to time, have you ever encountered any barriers? And I, I know that I'm an exception, but I haven't. I've never felt that there was anything that I couldn't do. I've just gone and done it, and I've never run into any opposition. The thing about the two jobs, yes, that's true. I would work, uh, I, I wrote songs with uh, Jerry Goffin, who was my first husband, and that, that is very difficult. But what, have you been involved in the actual women's movement? Um, not not o openly, you know, not overtly. I haven't gotten up and spoken about it because I, I really didn't... F I felt that everyone was doing it better than I. I was writing songs about feelings. I was writing songs about... Um, I was just being myself, and a lot of people apparently could identify with that, and that was very rewarding. But I, I wasn't really conscious of being a vanguard. I just did what I did, and I guess I was good at it, and I had the respect of both men and women, and I never had a problem working with either sex. Right. In fact, I, I enjoy working with men at, either way. But that's, I mean, you're living it. The whole, the whole problem is to be able to do what we want to do. Some, yes. Somebody, I, I went in to buy a, a leotard, in fact, the other day, and the woman who was running the shop said to me, I mean, she's there with 50 people working and doing a very good job, and she said, well, she said, you didn't make it easy, but you made it possible. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it isn't that we, that we want to do it for each other or that we want any special standards or uh, any special favors. We just want to be able to use our talents. Yeah. Well, I, as I say, I was one of the lucky ones. I know that I was the exception, but if my 
uh, my example has opened up ways for anybody. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud and pleased that it has.